The purpose of this video is to introduce you to cofunctions and show you how you can use them to solve problems. All right, we're going to start uh, by writing expressions for the sine and cosine of angle A. Just a reminder, so ka toa, sine is the relationship between the opposite and the hypotenuse. Cosine is the relationship between the adjacent and the hypotenuse. And the tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio between its opposite side and its adjacent side. So in this very first exp uh, example, they want us to write expressions for sine and cosine of angle A. So sine of angle A is going to be the ratio between the leg opposite angle A, or leg A, over the hypotenuse, which in this case is C. Cosine of angle A is going to be the relationship between the adjacent leg, which is B, and the hypotenuse. In part B, they want us to do the same thing, but this time using angle B is a reference angle. So the sine of angle B is the opposite side, which is leg B over the hypotenuse. The cosine of angle B is going to be the adjacent side or the adjacent leg, which is leg A over C. And then in part C, they want us to go ahead and take a look at what we've written. And they're asking us if we notice a relationship between any of the trig ratios that we've written above. Well, and the answer to that, I hope, is yes, because the sine of angle A is equivalent to the cosine of angle B. And likewise, the cosine of angle A is equivalent to the sine of angle B. So yes, we do notice a relationship. And what is it? Well, the sine of angle A is equivalent to the cosine of angle B. And likewise, the sine of angle B is equivalent to the cosine of angle A. And that's because angle in any right triangle, the two acute angles are always complementary. They have to be. The three angles of the triangle have to sum up to 180. So because angle A and angle B are complements, this co-angle relationship will always hold true. The sine of one angle will be the same as the cosine of its complement. And that is really a big key idea for this particular video. And the reverse of that holds true as well. The cosine of one angle is equal or equivalent to the sine of its complement. So down at the bottom where they're asking us to solve these problems, we're going to keep those two big ideas in mind. Number one says find a value of theta for which the statement sine of theta is equal to cosine of 15 degrees is a true statement. So again, we're comparing sine and cosine. What that means is that theta and 15 degrees have to be complementary angles. And if they're complementary angles, we know that their sum is 90 degrees. So I'm going to write a little equation here that sums them up, sets them equal to 90. That means theta must be equal to 75 degrees. In example two, they're asking us to solve the following problems. And again, notice that in each and every one of these instances, they're comparing sine of one angle to cosine of another. Well, the only way those two can be true is if those two angles are complementary angles. So really, this is just a sneaky little way of asking us to find the complement. So this is going to be 38 degrees. Why? Because 42 and 38 sum up to 90. Except I think I just did that mental math wrong. I think I want that to be 48 degrees. I'm liking that better. One angle is going to complement 12 degrees. Well, 78 and 12 are going to add up to 90. And here, these guys are each going to be 45 degrees because, again, they have to sum up to 90. All right, down at the bottom in example three, they're asking us to, again, solve for the unknown. 
And again, notice that we're comparing the sine of one angle to the cosine of another. Sine of the first angle is equivalent to the cosine of the next. Sine of one angle is equivalent to cosine of the next. So it, what that tells me is that those angles must be complementary angles. So in other words, 3 fourths x plus 1 fourth x has to add to 90 degrees. So 3 fourths and 1 fourth is 4 fourths, or x, which is equal to 90 degrees. In this example, the first angle, 5x minus 22 degrees, plus the second angle, x subtract 10 degrees, must sum up to 90 degrees. I'm going to add 32 to both sides. And I think I'm going to grab my calculator so I can avoid making a careless mental math early error like I did earlier. And then I'll divide both sides by 6. And in the last example, the idea is exactly the same. Since I've got the sine of one angle equivalent to the cosine of the other, I know that the two angles have to be complementary angles. I'm going to mentally subtract 63 from both sides. And then go ahead and divide both sides by the fraction 3 fourths. All right, so there's your video on co-functions. Why don't you go ahead and summarize the important understandings up at the top of the next page, and then see if you can apply what you've learned in order to answer the questions on that page.